Hello, welcome to Trade Secrets. I'm Duncan, I'm a photographer based in Northumberland, and I'd like you to smile. Photo booth photographs are never quite that flattering, but you can improve upon them if you happen to have in your bag a piece of white paper. Put under the chin, it reflects the light and gives you a much more flattering jawline. But of course, remember, keep it just out of shot. To cut down the amount of camera shake you can get from telephoto lenses that really magnify shake, just get a piece of string, tie it around one end of the lens, Get the other piece of string, tie it around your foot, oh. tension one to the other, pull tight. It's amazing how much it reduces all that shake and stuff. If you want to protect your camera, especially if you go down on the beach, what I've made is a bag, a camera bag, out of bubble wrap. You take a length of bubble wrap, you just either tape it down the edges or staple it. The advantage of this is you can see what's inside the bag. You just put your camera in, you fold it over, and that will protect it from the sea, the sun, and from bashes and knocks. And off you go. You know what it's like when you're using the self-timer on a camera? You can never find a surface that's just right and at the right angle. So what you want to do is to get a plastic bag, stuff it with anything you like, newspaper, a cardigan, or whatever, place it on the surface that you want to use, Put the camera there, have a look through, make sure the adjustment is right, and hey presto! X-rays at airports can fog your films and ruin your holiday snaps, so give them a bit of extra protection. Stick them in some baking foil and take them home like your sandwiches. Good boy! Another one. Here he comes, here he comes. <laughs> If you want a really easy, simple way of getting a soft focus effect on your photographs, just get an old pair of tights, stretch the material over the lens. Simple. On really bright days like this, Polaroid sunglasses are not only good in front of your eyes, but you can use them in front of the camera lens for really dramatic effect. Beach scenes, landscapes, shimmering water. Lens hood, very important piece of kit, stops the flare on the lens from the sun, but it can be expensive. But there is an alternative. A margarine tub, painted black, with a hole punched in the middle, will slot over your lens, and et voila, a lens hood. Using a flash gun, whether it be a separate flash gun like this or a little flash on a tiny compact camera, the light that gives out is really harsh and gives really sharp shadows. If you get yourself cigarette paper, like this one, and just stick it over the bulb bit like that, it softens the light quite a bit and helps reduce that red eye effect. In wedding and portrait photography, we use reflectors a great deal of the time. And instead of buying expensive reflectors, what you can do is just use kitchen foil. But what you have to do is you have to scrunch it up into a ball because you've got to be able to create a scattered light to make the reflector more effective. You just then wrap it around a sheet of card and there you have a perfect reflector. OK, you've made your lens hood with your margarine tub, but you've got the lid. You can use this to create all sorts of effects. Nice soft edges, cut them to any shape you like, and we're ready to go. When photographing children, it's a very good idea to take, in order to take their minds off being photographed, give them some sticky tape and put it in the palm of their hand. It gives them something to do and can create a very thoughtful shot. Here you are, Jack. 
What have we got there? If you're photographing someone who's going a little bit thin on top, then bring the camera angle down below eye level and what little they've got will just look that little bit better. A lot of family portraiture is done at home, especially around the settee. The problem with that is that when you sit females down, their knees shoot up in the air and it's very ungainly. Two ideas. First, bring the females to the front of the settee so that you're photographing the side of the legs and cross their feet is much more elegant. Or, take a couple of phone books, place it under the settee, and if you sit the subject on the phone books, it's a lot more elegant. A good way to get people to relax is to get them to blow a raspberry and then take the photograph afterwards and get a nice relaxed portrait. Another good way of getting relaxed portraits is to take two shots in quick succession. Once number one is over, nobody's expecting the second one. One of the most conspicuous things with photography is the actual action of lifting a camera up to your eye. Everybody notices, everybody can sense you're taking a photograph and freezes and starts acting very unnaturally. If you just get used to using a camera down by your hip, people don't realise it's there and you get far more natural photographs. How about a nice white soft vignette? Washing up liquid bottle, take the top and the bottom off and it'll slide over your lens. And the beauty of this is that you can adjust the vignette by sliding it up and down. It's very tempting to take people's photographs in bright sunlight, but it's not a very flattering light. Far better to take them in the shade, perhaps under a tree here. Much more complimentary light, and you can frame them as well. To be able to get the attention of a group of people and make them all smile at the same time, you can always try and produce the unexpected. Disaster! Your little darling has taken a ballpoint pen and scribbled all over your favourite photograph. Not only that, but a permanent marker. Not a disaster. We've got metal polish wadding. All you do is rub on, quick scrub, and then quick buff with some cotton wool, and it's magic. It's all gone. How about that? If you've got a film that's vitally important and you really don't want it to get lost, either in the post or at the laboratory, it's simple. Just write your name and address on a piece of paper, put it about four feet away, and take its photograph. Then you know it's on the film and the laboratory won't lose it. One, two, three, Bebo! You good boy? Yes, he's a good boy.